All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the classroom for our virtual band and guitar class uh, this first quarter. Uh, just to make sure that everybody knows the schedule, um, first period will be guitar class. Second period will be wind ensemble and lunch. So it's important just to note that you'll have half of your wind ensemble class. You'll have a half hour lunch break, and then you'll have another 45 minutes of wind ensemble. And then um, our third period class this quarter is concert band. Uh, so um, I have rosters and all that stuff going, so, um, but things are still kind of getting changed, so don't, don't sweat it. Tuesday is kind of like they will hopefully have all the T's crossed, I's dotted uh, for you. Um, as you can see, I will be teaching from the band room um, <clears throat> probably 99% of the time. And uh, I have some things that we'll go over, but first I wanted to just kind of let you guys know, um, sorry, I can't stop my phone from ringing uh, right, right now. It kind of seems like a way of life at, right before school starts. But I wanted to just let you guys kind of know what class is going to look like. Um, and I know some of you might be like, how's the camera looking like this? I have everything flipped around on my camera so that when I write on the board, you can read it. Um, but when we come in to class every day, uh, my hope is that we have you know, like some kind of entry task, like a Google slide that activates um, what we're gonna do. Maybe we all go to the same link. Uh, maybe we just get ready to play a game. Um, maybe it's an icebreaker, maybe it's breakout rooms, um, but we'll do something because I think the, for me, the number one piece to make sure that we stay focused on above everything, even above music making is uh, the culture of what we're doing. So we wanna to continue to build community and culture in our band program. So just be prepared for that. Um, we'll probably do things like just little one minute mindfulness exercises, um, kind of like a moment of Zen moment uh, for you guys to just take every morning or I guess afternoon for some of you and uh, just kind of get ready for music making. Um, and then also uh, we'll have you know, probably some time to do some breathing gym. I know that's kind of a thing that it's kind of like a, 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 a summer band camp thing, but it's still a lot of fun. So uh, we'll try to do some of those things. So that will be how class starts with, you know, activating you into small groups, big groups, um, moving and, and, and things like that. Uh, then we are going to play our instruments. It will be a lot of fundamental work. Um, it'll be a lot of I play, you play. You're going to have materials. Um, we're going to work out handing out materials like a little booklet, and we're going to work out um, handing out instruments. That'll be a project that I, I am, I'm trying to finalize still, um, but it'll be something like come by the school at a certain time for low reads, a certain time for low brass, um, so that we can limit the number of touches to the building from students as uh, we pick up our instruments and packets. Um, so be, stay tuned for that. I know, I know that's something that we all want to know about now, but um, in the fundamental time, uh, this will be a significant part of what we're doing. My, my belief really is we're going to go slow right now while we're in this virtual setting so that when we come back, we can very quickly transition into playing um, great repertoire that mixes our instruments up and all that kind of stuff into like true band music. Um, so it'll be a lot of fundamental work. Um, but it'll be good. There's some challenging things. Some of it is also teaching you how to teach yourself some things because um, I wouldn't say that is a strength of my teaching. It's a lot of me standing up here and like, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. Um, this will be a lot more helpful in like helping you uh, either run sectionals yourself and teach younger students or as a young student how to really practice and how to really solve a problem musically instead of just like looking at it and you know, crying or something like that, which is how I handled things when I was in high school. So uh, a lot of fundamental work and those fundamental uh, sessions will be both led by me and then I'll send the woodwinds into small sectionals. So like there'll be a clarinet sectional in a breakout room, a flute sectional in a breakout room. Um, and you guys can work on instrument specific things led by your, your student leaders or just peer led. And I'll keep the brass in the big room and we'll work on 
full brass ensemble, like brass skills, like lip slurs, range builders, things like that. And then about, you know, 20 minutes later, we'll flip flop and I'll have the woodwinds and we'll work on fingering patterns and just like dexterity drills while the brass players go off and work on their specific um, little things. Maybe there's a cool solo in a, in a piece that we're working on or there's a hard part in a song that we're working on. So um, it'll be kind of nice because you'll have like these three kind of fundamental um, chapters. You'll have the big full group, you'll have your instrument family, brass or woodwinds, and then you'll have your subgroups of clarinets, trumpets, F horn, trombone, saxophones, etc. So um, anyways, that's what the middle of class periods will typically look like. And then um, the end of the day, and we can, you know, slide these around too sometimes, but we'll also have like a project. So we might be working on a, um, both bands might be working on a concert band piece that we're trying to put together into a virtual ensemble where all the sections are kind of up in Brady Bunch style, if you even know what Brady Bunch is, um, your parents do. Um, but uh, we'll do those virtual ensembles. That's a, that's a goal of ours is to produce one recording um, a month so that uh, we can share content with our community and, and get people excited, not just about our music making, but also about the learning that is still happening at school. Um, we'll do a lot of pet band music for those projects, I, I feel like. I think we'll, it'll probably be like three to one, like three pet band tunes to every one concert band tune, um, simply because um, the, we can make them more fun with a pet band because you guys are pretty fun to watch play pet band music as, as well as listen to. So there'll be a lot of different things for those projects. Um, we will do some music theory. It will not be like last year, last spring when that was pretty much all we did. Um, we'll do some things, some ear training probably is a better way to describe it because um, I really want to train your ears so that you identify things that you're hearing instead of it's just like mystical, magical music, um, but they're actually like scientific you know, measurable things that are happening. Um, and then uh, we'll also do some appreciation, a lot of, you know, guided listening and things like that. Um, but also I plan on helping introduce marching band pieces. Um, I know that's a big part of our program that's missing right now and we can't make that up right now. Um, and and on, in all honesty, we're not gonna have anything this year that is similar to the marching band experience of the past. Um, but we are trying to offer a marching band in the spring if um, we get back to uh, safety and all that stuff. So um, we just kind of have to put marching band on the side as far as like an activity, but we can still learn things about it. So <clears throat> that's another goal of mine too, so that if we do get to go outside this spring, um, we're not starting right away, um, like without a marching band camp with like, you know, body movement and all that stuff. So just kind of be prepared uh, to try new things during those, those project-based things. And some of the projects will be like, hey, Clarinets, you guys are working on a clarinet quintet, you know, and you're, you know, you each have your five parts and you're trying to solve, you know, how to play your part versus that person's part. And um, I know there's a lot of questions on how are we going to do this? How are we going to play in band through this um, camera? That It will not be the same. Um, I'll, I'll just talk real quickly up here on the board. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, that are kind of important to think about so that you can plan. First of all, we want to make sure that you have a chair for your class. Okay, so I know not everybody has like this perfect little corner set up in their home um, for learning, uh, but we really do need to have a chair. It needs to be something where it fosters good posture so we can sit with our, uh, you know, feet on the ground and our derriere on the edge of the seat so that we're sitting up nice and tall, creating good habits. For our breathing. Um, and then, so we don't want to be in our beds. You can, oh, I'm pointing the wrong way. Uh, we don't want to be on our beds. Okay, that's going to be really, really important. Um, that was cool in the spring. We didn't, didn't pick on you, but we want to try to get into a chair. So a kitchen chair, if you have to move it every day, get permission, but that's just part of your setup. We, we do that in band all the time anyways. Um, and then this is probably going to be the hardest part for a lot of you to solve and you don't need to have it solved by uh, Wednesday, but be thinking about it, be creative. And I know that it's not ideal, but I, I know I've seen kids do their um, playing tests in a car in a garage. I mean, it's not the greatest idea. I don't love that as a permanent solution that you have to go sit in a car in a garage every day uh, to practice. Um, but we can also break it out. Maybe you move a little bit during your classroom. Maybe when it's playing time, you go here into like a, 
Maybe you have like a little storage space or maybe you have a patio you can go outside or, or something, but um, we'll work on that. And if there is a problem, we can always just come down to like, you will do fingers only. Um, and uh, you know, you'll work on the, the patterns of things that you're doing in class. So, um, but be creative about this. Trumpets, really any brass instrument, you can just go on Amazon, type in your instrument and then write like uh, mute, practice mute. A practice mute is a great, great tool. They're used by professionals in hotel rooms across the country. Um, so look up for a practice mute. You can even type in hotel mute. They're sometimes called that. Um, I bought one for my trumpet, my trumpet playing son um, so that uh, he can practice his trumpet while his sister's in class too. Because I know a lot of you have multiple classrooms in your home now. And uh, when you have your over the ears listening device or whatever, it's not that invasive from classroom to classroom in your, in your home. Um, and I know we have students that have apartments and, and things like that too. Uh, so we'll be creative. You know, there's, there's nothing, if we can do this online, then we can solve that problem. All right, there's nothing that's gonna be too big for us to try to problem solve. All right, um, and then the, I, I just wanna mention that you should have a metronome. Uh, and a tuner that's on a separate device. So if you're using a school Chromebook, um, I don't want you using a Google metronome on your Chromebook. It would be great if you had it on your phone because um, we shouldn't be using our phones for class. Um, I'll show you my favorite app. A lot of you guys know about this app. It's called Tonal Energy. And what I love about it is it keeps track of your practice and it gives you a little happy face um, for streaks and stuff like that. So it kind of gamifies practicing just a, a wee bit. Um, and uh, when you're tuning, this happy face will like smile, like full like you, teeth and everything. Uh, and when you're not in tune on the tuner, it kind of frowns at you or looks at you very sternly like I would. Um, and then uh, it has great metronome tools. It is $1.99. And at this moment, you can't download it to your, your school Chromebook because the school doesn't have a policy of allowing students to buy apps for um, probably obvious reasons. Although I wish this one app they would let you. But um, so if you can do that, another option is just to like check it out and go find a manual metronome. All right. Um, a lot of times I will be playing my metronome. Um, I have my little harmony director here. It's my my piano. I don't know if you can really see it, but yeah, there you go. Um, so I'll have the metronome running and most of the time you'll listen to the metronome off of my screen, but there'll be times where I need you to do a metronome on your screen. Um, you don't want to run anything through your computer sound. So if my metronome, if I turn on my metronome, you're hearing it through the same microphone that I'm talking through. Okay, um, and we'll go over those kind of things too. But if those of you that are just like jumping ahead and you're thinking like, you know, how is this going to work? How's that going to work? Those are some of the, the tricks. All right. Um, and then we're going to have a lot of fun. I just want to make sure that everybody knows uh, this will be okay. It will be weird. It definitely will be weird, um, but it's okay. We're going to have fun. And there'll be days where it, the best part of class was just watching Mr. Parker lose his mind over some technology issue. Um, and there'll be some days where you want to cry because your connection didn't work the way you wanted it to, um, uh, or just something, you know, like another sibling was being loud that day and it was, you know, stressful for you. Like, we're just going to have to be okay. And if there's a problem, you can always communicate with me through the band app, through email. Um, it's going to be okay. All right, we're gonna have lots of fun. That's, that's all I care about. Is this fun? Are we making music? And uh, are we still continuing to build our culture and community? All right, culture and community. Our band parents have organized a pretty cool activity. I guess I don't really have to get out of the way, but um, the virtual 5K. We're just gonna do a little fundraiser, I guess, um, where uh, runners get a t-shirt and a medal. I, I was holding this up like it's a medal, but it's just my badge. But um, people will get a medal and uh, they'll feel really proud of themselves for a medal for a 5K, even if they don't do the actual 5K because you just, on the 24th, you just go do a 5K. You do like a little picture and hashtag it to our Instagram, Facebooks and stuff like that. And uh, it's just kind of a fun community way. You can have grandparents and aunties and uncles from the East Coast. Uh, do it or a sibling who's out of the country. Uh, anybody can participate in it. 
There'll be more information coming out soon through the parent group. Um, but here's what we need. I need students to create some artwork for a, for a t-shirt or something like that. Um, it should be funny. Um, it can be COVID related. We're having a COVID virtual 5K. Um, uh, but I know a lot of you remember a t-shirt that was sold. I think um, Danny Chalpin's father had made some funny sketches of me when we were in New York holding a Diet Coke in the Statue of Liberty. And, uh, and it kind of said like Fire Department New York or something like that on my shirt. Um, it can be funny like that. You can kind of tease, teasingly mock. Uh, I can be a caricature if you need to, if you need to sell it that way. <laughs> um, uh, but it should just be a t-shirt that you would want. Because our opinion is if students make it and students like it, then everybody's going to like it um, because it's going to represent our strongest voice in our program, and that's you. So um, it is kind of a quick turnaround. There's a little technology gap, and I thought I had sent out an announcement about this, and I didn't. Um, so again, uh, I'm, I'm, we're all allowed to uh, kind of get, get uh, a little bit um, to trip over ourselves on this as I trip over my words. But uh, Wednesday, it would be great if we had um, student artwork turned in. Um, it, it can be hand, hand done, uh, like penciling by hand or whatever. And it can also be a digitally done or you can do it by hand and transfer it to digital. It's anything, all right? Um, and then we'll work with a t-shirt company to get together. We're gonna get registration open relatively soon in a couple of weeks. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun and a way for us to uh, raise some some money for the band program because we're not going to have uh, it, it really doesn't seem like the fall craft fair is happening. Obviously, we didn't have the car wash that we normally have to so um, Anyways, right now I would normally ask questions, but there's nobody here. I'm just recording this for you guys. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the first couple of days are going to be a little bit different. I don't think, you know, just like normal high school when it started. It's not like the very first day. Everything was you know, like the full schedule and stuff. So um, I don't know what the schedule looks like yet on Wednesday. Um, I just know uh, the schedule as far as, you know, the traditional, it starts at, I think, 8.50 and it, and it gets done a little bit later than normal, but um, not, it's a pretty small change. So um, you'll have lunch during second period. Um, you'll have advisory with your second period. I know that was kind of a, a kind of a bummer. We have a, our own like band advisory, but um, second period students will be put into an advisory class um, together. So if you have a second period uh, with me, then you'll have me for your advisor. All right. Okay. Well, I appreciate all your time listening to this and um, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun, probably some uh, little pathways that we'll go on discover that we never even thought about. So I appreciate all of you and your patience to make this school year start. And um, I know we all wish we were finishing our last day of camp today, but um, we're here where we are now. And it'll be nice to see a classroom when you check in. Most of your teachers will be in a classroom, but not all teachers will be teaching from a classroom because frankly, we don't have enough classrooms in our building um, for all the classes that we're offering. So that was uh, another sticky, um, challenge to solve. So anyways, I appreciate you guys. Love you very much. And I'm excited to meet the freshmen and uh, we're going to get to it. All right. Take care. Adios.